we're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And to join me in the G spot, that is guest spotlight, I have the lovely, the amazing Azure D. Johnson. The crowd goes wild. <laughs> she is joining me on today's episode for I am in love with love, okay? And uh, I'm blessed to have one of my besties on the show. Um, have interviewed her one other time before on a show that I did prior on After Buzz. And now now I have her on my very own show for The Spicy Life. So this is a true blessing. She recently just starred in Imani playing the role of Dominique. And it's an action thriller. Um, she's playing, you know, uh, this uh, <laughs> sweet that turns like actually like evil badass uh, chick. So um, I'm going to have her talk about the role. But as always... Mm -hmm. And I call her Didi. That's my nickname for her, Fahidi Didi. Didi. But I call her Fahidi <laughs> Didi. Okay. Oh God. So this is that. a this is a real OG friend. Like used to live <laughs> together, like day one, yes. like college. So um, I have to warm you up, like everybody else, because yes. you have to keep it a buck one hundred with me. You know, I want like a very intimate conversation. Here we go. <laughs> So to warm me up or to warm you up, let me say <laughs> to warm, you up to warm me, up. me up. No, to warm you up. Um, you have to share when you first fell in love with yourself. That is my spice breaker. Mm, man. Um, that is that's a hard question because <laughs> it always I mean, is. everybody's always spot. like, damn it. Oh, <laughs> uh, I didn't know it was gonna start off like this. Every um, episode I do starts off like this. Why don't you know that that's my spice breaker? You know spice what I breaker? should know. Okay. I should know. <laughs> I'm gonna this. hold okay. you accountable. All right. Um, let's see. I I think falling in love with myself has been a journey and I have struggled with that. I'm going to be real. I, I think that I've always liked myself, but I think over the course of my life, I just, you know, really have tried to find like that soft spot. And um, but I think when I really, truly discovered loving myself, I would say is through getting my heart broke mm. because I think that's when you actually go deeper with yourself that's when you are forced honestly to just kind of really do the heart healing and then that process you really have to find your joy again find like the love and, and rediscover who you are so like I think heartbreak was the defining moment actually heartbreak after heartbreak mm. After heartbreak, um, <laughs> which I had a front seat to, where's yes, my popcorn? <laughs> you were you were definitely the support for that, but like I think those experiences really helped me to go deeper and to like find who I am again. And I think in those spaces is when you really see what you're made of. You see, you know, I have to, I have to look in the mirror and I have to find my beauty again, find my joy because I think so much of that was not taken from me. Um, but I think in those relationships, I had to like. You know, there was some darkness, and I think to come to the light, I had to really, like I said, find m the love for myself again. So, you know, I'm going to push because I want a story. Oh, God. You're going to share uh, what that darkness looked like. So what made you fall out of your of love with yourself? Like, what about these relationships made you fall out of love? What made you say, like, damn it, maybe I'm unlovable or, you know, maybe my self-worth gets hit hard in this moment. Give me a specific example about what happened with you in a relationship that made you kind of turn against yourself. I think I have really high hopes and belief in people. And, you know, when you pour yourself into someone and when you, I mean, I'm a, I'm a lover, so I'm ready for love and I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm ready for it. And I think when you pour yourself into someone and it's not reciprocated or they abuse that yeah. power, it, it it just ripped me apart mm -hmm. because I was ready and willing and open. And I think to have that not valued, mm -hmm. it just kind of destroyed me. Because then you start to look at yourself like, what did I do? What did I not do? Yep. You know, what could I have done? Yep. And I think you just go through these um, mental and emotional obstacles. Um, I don't know, mental, uh, you, you're just confused. And I think a lot of times I was left without, sometimes without answers or a true understanding of why. And so I think in that time, I had to like, I had to feel it, you know? So that was the darkness. And the darkness is not easy to get out of. <laughs> it's not. So uh, give you I hate that I, I could laugh at the end, but it's because right. I've been through um, a lot of her heartbreaks, right? So like, mm -hmm. I, so not only do I do this for a living, when my friends are going through darkness, right? Um, I am experiencing almost the relationship with you, right? Because exactly. I get to hear 
and then be privy to seeing sometimes the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -hmm. um, I get to see your guys' journey from the moment when it is butterflies and mm -hmm. gumdrops in the beginning to the, you know, end where it's like screaming, cursing, and like, you know, I hate you so much right now. Like, it can go from zero to 100 mm -hmm. sometimes. And some of you guys will relate, you know, being a friend and like hearing you know, someone not love your friend the way that they deserve or your friend not even love themselves enough to go and get someone who's more in alignment with um, the deep love that you have to give. It can be, I feel like, hard on my end and I feel traumatized from PTSD yeah. from your breakups as well. <laughs> I mean, you're a real friend. You really were in the trenches with me, I have to say. <laughs> to the point where I have spoken to these men on the yes. phone and I'm like, sir, what are you doing right now, mister? Like, please get it together. Uh, you know, and I've had like several conversations with, I feel like I've talked to all your dudes, but um, I, I brought you on for the episode of uh, I'm in love with love because I feel like you and I have a lot of similarities and not just how we love, but how um, excessively we love on and on and on and on because the love is so strong. It lasts <laughs> on and on. And what I mean by that, you guys, is like some would consider me back in my day before I was married a serial dater. Um, there was no me being single for very long. And you very much are like that, even though you may be going through a heartache, even though it will feel like someone literally ripped your heart out. Mm -hmm. I'm always there to be like, what? You're going to be in another relationship <laughs> in a few months. So why are we even crying? Yeah. And, you know, it's it's but it is this um, deep love that you overflow with that I think also helps with you being so desirable and meeting someone so quickly. Yeah. You know, um, I am a proponent of love. I just I love love. I wouldn't say I'm a hopeless romantic. I would say I'm a hopeful romantic. Absolutely. I believe in it like. I was raised, you know, my dad and I are very close um, and he was the first man to love me. And this love has like guided me throughout my whole life. Yeah. So I've been treated like a princess, been told I was gorgeous. Um, he's instilled a level of confidence in me that's kind of top tier. So and that kind of gentle love receiving it from my father is kind of what I'm used to. Yeah. So like I look at love as like you know, almost not my like my father's love, but it's it's an extension of that. It's a part of how I developed yeah. love. So I just believe in it. Um, and even though at the times when I'm dating or involved, it it feels like this is the one, and I'm like, I believe in it. It's gonna be it. This time it's gonna hit. It's gonna hit. <laughs> and and I think that my belief in it, I don't carry the baggage or the energy of like not believing or being bitter about the breakups. Or I still want that for my life so i think yeah I, just, I, I i would just attribute it to me just believing in it like really believing one thing that i do love about um your dad uh because i you know i have had you guys will hear all the time you know about my my daddy issues and how i try to find my mom a man so that i could have a daddy but i love witnessing uh didi's father because Azure D. Uh, Azure D. <laughs> she's gonna make me call her <laughs> Azure D. Okay, I hate yes. when friends are like referred to me by this name. Like you want me to call you spicy. Yes, you have to call me I'm spicy. I'm calling you Maricela. <laughs> I will not. She uses call my you government spicy. name, okay? Maricela. Oh, and Didi is her nickname, so it's like we're doing the opposite to each other. But <laughs> right. But your dad, um, hearing him the way that he talks about you, or when I see him light up in your presence, or when he's like, My baby girl's a star. Or just, you know, he would be the first to like bust out some photos of you or a mm. video of you. And that kind of relationship is what not only I wanted and I craved growing up, but it was what also too added to um, kind of giving me insight in what it should look like for my child. Right. Like, dang, I need to make sure that I have a man who will like, you know, worship this, you know, human that I want to create with. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like uh, your dad kind of set like a, br a blueprint absolutely. for that. Um, so I, I, and I love that you've had that. I absolutely love that you've had that. Yeah. And I can't wait for you to give that to your own child. Yes. Because you have wait. the blueprint, right? Yes. Azure D. Azure is uh, blue and French. Yes. So. Uh, <laughs> Fun fact. Fun fact. <laughs> so she has the Azure print, right? The blueprint. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that that relationship, I think you're right, has set such a tone for how you want to be loved. Mm -hmm. So I see you oftentimes get into relationships with people who 
maybe sometimes start off loving you hardcore hardcore and sometimes it's fraudulent and then like the true colors come out right but never ever 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 no matter how dirty somebody could do you or um even because you take accountability and like your contributions for growth we've had multiple conversations about Mm -hmm. that and how you've shown up in relationship but never ever 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 do you lose sight of okay i this didn't work out (laughs) on to the next like you were always ready to like heal so that you can get to the good stuff again i mean it's not easy you know it, it's i have the idea of like knowing what i want but that process is not easy at all like you go through the like i said we talked about the mm-hmm. darkness to get to the light so you know i'll be on my workouts i'll be you know <laughs> doing all the journaling i'm doing i'm hiking i'm i'm finding outlets to get to that part to believe again and i will say contrary to what you said i also have been done wrong, but I also have been treated really well too. This is true. This I can't, is true. I have yeah. to. I have to this say is, that because that's so it's true. not been this just everybody's fraudulent. Facts, I've had facts, really facts. beautiful relationships and men that have loved me and have shown up in big ways and this have. Is true. I mean, it's it's why I'm used to the good treatment because I do have you know I have I have had really great treatment as well. So I I don't want to make sure that that's it's not all bad. Okay, I stand corrected. So it's not that it's been um, you know, these men from hell or anything like that. Uh there's been a few there's bad been apples. a few <laughs> irresponsible adults. You're right. Um but you are right. The the demand or the command for mm. treating uh you like a queen has been there and it has shown up. So you have had really incredible relationships and I think that it's those positive experiences that also aid in your ability to say, okay, it is possible. Where for a lot of women, when it's been negative, 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 Mm -hmm. right? There's been no pouring into their love cup to help their belief system Mm -hmm. about true love or genuine or, you know, being crazy in love, being um, real for them. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, you know, very great point. Mm -hmm. Uh, What I want to give is um, the reality of what I think the culture is telling us right now. So, uh, which also inspired today's episode. I'm going to read you guys this like long ass post. <laughs> I think it's from the shade room, <laughs> but I'm going to read it because it made me think about me and Didi and our like deep As desire for <laughs> companionship and love. And I really appreciated this girl. Her name is Kira J. Um, spiritual word is who posted her. Okay. And it made me think about doing this episode with you. And just cause we always have these like super deep conversations mm-hmm. about love. But this girl gets super vulnerable and let me and and I will tell you what she says and why I like what she says after I read this long ass post to you guys. So here you go. Kira J said or posted full transparency. I've been alone for a long time now, but this is the first time in a long time that I have been lonely. Most of my friends are married or in relationships. So I've always the third wheel being out with a couple now or just being by myself. And making more friends doesn't help. I have no shortage of platonic intimate bonds, but that's not the type of intimacy my heart is craving. Society keeps telling women to love themselves as if self-love will ever replace the desire for romantic love. And they also tell us to be strong and we don't need no man to define us as if admitting that you want to be loved makes you weaker than pretending that you don't care. I feel vulnerable enough to share this because I know there's a lot of men and women that can relate. Loneliness is a very real emotion and don't let anyone make you feel desperate for admitting that you feel it. This season of loneliness is self-inflicted. I haven't been held by a man in a really long time. I haven't dated or slept with anyone in a long time. I went through a lot in the past and I finally gave myself permission to heal. In this healing, I have to separate logic from emotion. Logically, I need to continue on the path I'm on because the men I've chosen weren't good for me. So until I do better by myself, I have to stay by myself. That's logic. Emotions say, this doesn't feel good. Why can't you go back to the last guy or call someone to give you some attention? Your emotions don't always have your best interest because they don't want you to feel pain. But sometimes you have to be sad for your long-term happiness goal. My long-term goal is marriage and more children, partnership and stability, protection and support. So I have had to consciously choose to put my long-term goals over my temporary satisfaction. So yeah, I'm lonely at the moment, but I'm not going to let that loneliness send me back to men I've prayed my way from. 
to everyone reading this, keep doing the work. It's all going to work out for you. Okay. Thank you, Kara J for that <laughs> long Very post. That, shout out to spiritual mm -hmm. work. Um, reason why this stood out to me, right? You guys may gather other information from it or other points that hit home with you. But what I loved is that she was, uh, calling out society for telling us that self-love is the solution for everything. And I think that there is this narrative out there of um, you don't need a man. You don't need a man. You don't need a man. And I think that you can actually deeply love yourself, still feel loneliness sometimes because there's nothing in comparison to companionship. I'm sorry. Like Absolutely not. partnership and companionship, right? It's a game changer. And mm -hmm. I, as someone who has been single in the streets, um, been single, not in the streets and just kept to myself. And then someone who has been in incredible relationships and someone who has been in like the worst of tumultuous relationships, nothing compares to the kind of partnership, one that I have now, or um, the deep love that partnership brings when you're in a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think that you sit with me on being truthful about being okay saying i need a partner i need a man i can't even like that's for me and i'm speaking for myself and whoever is on this <laughs> this particular um journey um i think there's nothing greater than having the companionship i absolutely need a man i absolutely want a person to walk in this life with to build with to grow with to share my pain with to share my excitement with like there's nothing better. But what I appreciate about her post, though, is the idea that it's like using logic versus emotion mm -hmm. and also feeling the pain. Like people don't want to sit with pain. Yeah. Yep. That's why you go someone or that's why you dip you, you yep. in the relationship. You yep. don't want to feel the pain. Yep. I think it's important to sit with it. Feel it. Yeah. So you understand it and know how to balance it. I think that her post was really transparent. It was vulnerable. I appreciate how honest she was about mm -hmm. taking the time out to herself to just be alone for a second for the sacrifice to get to the place she wants to be, yep. which is a long-term relationship. So I agree with her. I, I, you know, like I said, we share a lot of the same sentiments yep. about love and needing a partner, wanting a partner, not being dependent on a partner, but just having that kind of support in your yeah. life can make you move mountains. Yeah. And that's, that's where it's at. And yeah, yeah society has... I mean, self-love is one thing, but you can't self-love your way out of the pain. You have to really, like I said, sit with it. And, um, you know, I just think that I share her sentiments just yeah. wholeheartedly. I think we have demonized mm. uh, being truthful about needing mm -hmm. um, partnership in order to uh, make ourselves feel better when, when we don't have it. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, sometimes it helps medicate the fear of mm -hmm. what if I don't get it mm -hmm. right by saying like, I don't need this thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the business of love. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Trust me, you need love. Okay. There's a reason that God is, created us on this earth to have companion and partnership mm -hmm. and God was even freaking lonely. Mm -hmm. So for him to say, I need to create these beings. I need to create these creatures. I need to make a sun and a moon for entertainment. I need to mm -hmm. um, create, you know what I'm saying? Everybody like, has a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Like he, even God, whether it's women or male, I'm not sure, but God even, right. Probably bodies both, but God even was like, no, I don't want to be in a lonely world. I'm going to create this universe for my own fulfillment and entertainment to be worshiped, to be loved, to, to be adored. Mm -hmm. And so we as humans, which mirror God and we embody because we have him in us, we even need that as well. And I think that we do ourselves a disservice to say that we don't need it and look at it if we use the word need as it being from a deficit. OK, mm -hmm. studies actually do show that if children don't get love, right, they've done they studies get... on animals, they studied on humans, every creature on Earth. If you don't know, if you do not get love. Um, you will have a tragic future if mm -hmm. you don't get love poured into you, right? Even plants need love. Mm -hmm. Like everything that carries energy, everything that um, has a life needs love in order to grow. And I think that um, it's unfortunate that when we use the word need in this negative way, that we start to buy into it and we stop focusing on how to meet and connect with a companion 
And I love that she even admitted like she's doing the work, right? Right. Your point about um, logic and emotion. Um, I want you guys to ask this uh, and think of this yourself. And um, I'm going to ask Didi first this question. Um, let's use percentage. Um, when it comes to relationship, what percentage would you say operates from emotion and what and percentage logic. operates from logic? <laughs> now, that's also a really good question. And I have to be honest. I will say I'm an emotionally emotionally driven person. Um, you know, as an actor, obviously, we have to tap into our emotions. So I feel things maybe a lot differently than a normal human because I just feel, you know, I'm an empath. But I think in relationship, because I am hopeful, because I do believe in love, because I have like this view of what I want, I will lead with the emotion, mm. I think, mm -hmm. because I'm hopeful that it will be reciprocated it's and I will be matched mm -hmm. with the person who will give me that same energy. Um, I think when I operate in logic, when at the point where something happens, right, where there's a shift or where there's, you know, I get where, where maybe there's a... Um, like when something shifts with the other person mm -hmm. and it feels like there may be some shadiness or there's something that we're not we're not sinking right mm -hmm. now. We're not in sync. I'll start to get more logical. Like, OK, what is this about? You know, is there someone else? You know, I kind of get more in my head about it. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as like percentage wise, I would say. It's not 50 50. <laughs> What? It's hella far from 50-50. I know. And I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm going to be vulnerable and honest about this. I probably am 70-30. Maybe 60-40. 60-40 You're emotion. giving yourself that much? Oh! Like, I would say you are 80-20. Wow. Yes. 80-20? 80% emotion, 20% logic. And you are only getting those 20% because you have me in your life. <laughs> Man, you guys, I the said truth hurts. Look, okay. Because <laughs> um, even what you said right now, you were like, you know, if the emotional I'll attachment start, that you yeah. have mm -hmm. isn't reciprocated, you'll start to then assess. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the fact that that you're assessing that only kicks in because of an emotional right. fear-based response. So Absolutely. it's still emotional when you start to start yeah. to like look for evidence. And mind you, when I talk about evidence, let me tell you, this woman, I had this dude that I was dating back in the day. <laughs> And uh, thank God for friends, because I had a feeling that he wasn't uh, only sleeping with me. OK, <laughs> we were not in a committed <laughs> relationship. It was a situation ship. Mm -hmm. But he made me feel like, uh, you know, it was magical. I felt a shift and I tell you. And how about you come back with evidence from Facebook photos? That's how old this is. <laughs> evidence from Facebook photos about the bracelets that he comes over to the house with matching this random girl at an event bracelets that she was wearing. <laughs> and it was the exact same bracelets and the exact same like. The, and then you started to piece research. together different things that she's been at that he mm -hmm. also was at timestamps. I was like, oh, <laughs> Inspector. Azure D gadget over here. I do like do that. that's so that was some logic that kicked in. You were like, oh, 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 I, I got because you. Because <laughs> it was some suspect behavior. Yes. So at that point, it's like I don't want to operate, I don't operate like, you know, I, I'm very optimistic about it. So I'm gonna keep being present with you and being, you know, yep. loving with until you until it match. something is not the math ain't mathing. Yep. And so at that point, I need to say, I need to step back and say, wait a minute. This don't sound right. Yeah. What's going on? And so at the point when I'm seeing you involved and you're into it and then we're like something is suspect. I, I we we found yeah. evidence to support that <laughs> something is suspect. So, you know, I, 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 I feel like I don't want to operate. Well, I, and it could be, you know, I'm good. You can get hurt and all that. But I want to operate with the belief that you're good before you're bad. Yeah. And then when you're bad or when you show signs of something not being right, then I'm going to use my logic because I am a very intelligent woman yeah. as well. Um, I'm going to, you know, check it. Yeah. And, 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 and make sure I check my sources and see what's going on. Yeah. Like, don't have me in no circus, you know? I think, though, for men, because we are in relationship with them, right? 
they aren't using as much emotion right. as soon as we are. So I mm -hmm. think to our detriment, what often happens is we're being driven by all this emotion yes. and they're thinking the entire time, Logic. like, does this make sense for me? Right. right. Like is she an asset or a liability. If exactly. I'm really going to like fuck with her the, the long way, mm -hmm. um, what is she contributing? What is she taking from? Right. right? And then because they are physically driven um, with, you know, wanting to sleep with us, sometimes they will try to give us the emotional bump or the mm -hmm. emotional spike that we need in order to get us in the bed. Mm -hmm. And it's not from a manipulation tactic because I don't think that men are trying to manipulate in those moments. I think that they understand that there are certain sentiments they need to make us feel in order to get us to a place where we're willing to spread our legs. <laughs> Right. So us knowing that and the way that I go about like teaching my clients is very much um, I take the information like you just gave. Right. If you share with me that you are 80 percent because I'm team, I'm team, I'm, 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 just, 70, I'm proclaiming 30, 60, this. OK, 40. I'm not taking that evidence. <laughs> I can see I know the real real 80 percent <laughs> emotion, 20 percent logic. I don't believe love to be a feeling. Mm -hmm. I think that it is um, a combo, right? A sushi combo. OK, uh, I believe that. It is partially logic and partially emotion. I don't think that it should just be 100% emotion. That means that it's behaviors. What mm -hmm. actions are you showing me to support the sentiment that I'm feeling? Mm -hmm. So me knowing that if you were my client and you were coming in, I would, similar to what I do just as friends, but I would start to like assess, okay, I get that we feel this way, but what are the behaviors or what is the actions that he's showing us to support this on a consistent basis for a X amount of time? And mm -hmm. if it's, too soon to be feeling the emotions that you're feeling that 80 then you're just gonna give them 80 percent like yeah. 80 percent within a couple weeks because yeah. that's really what a lot of times we do as women i'm there to hold you accountable like my clients right, right. You the benefits of this relationship yeah. but there's a lot of benefits that come to my package i got with the Didi. benefits Didi, like Didi gets i get a lot of benefits from her package as i got well, a though. coach already like just but <laughs> uh the whole, you know, yanking that chain and being like, ah, 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 like, come on now, Fahidi. Like, what's really going <laughs> I Did can't just say use my nicknames for you. It's Azure D. <laughs> Azure D, everyone. Fahidi D. Oh, uh, I can't, I can't not bring certain things to your attention. And so, um, but always going on this ride with you and trying to be like a support unit. But then at the same time, um, I love now that you trust me to talk to them. I think that that's so beautiful that you can call me with them now. <laughs> and you that because that really shows a certain a, another level of trust. Right. When you Absolutely. are like, dang, Marty, I can't wait for you to to meet him and talk to him. Not because you um, are, not because you're not because my opinion will change your mind, because when you're set on something, you are set on something. But you do appreciate the support and you do appreciate like my insight, but I still can't sway you one way or the other. You are very much like my mind is made up. If I love him, we are team <laughs> him all day. Right. But you will hear me out now because I think of some of the heartbreaks. I mm -hmm. think it took certain relationships to not work out mm -hmm. to now where you're like, OK, I trust you enough to speak to him and not embarrass me yeah. too much. And <laughs> no, I think you've earned that, too. It's like, you know, like I said, not only are you my best friend, but, you know, the work you do, I mean, you're changing lives. You have really spent years dedicating yourself to helping people find their purpose mates. That's amazing. And I not just, just because you're my friend, I can still separate and say, no, I yeah. actually value your expertise. I value how you can speak to the reality and uh, of my situations, mm -hmm. how you can speak to the truth of it and to get me to see the truth of it. Sometimes when I'm just not seeing it. Yeah. So it's not, yes, you're my friend, but I also, like I said, I really value your insight. So um, it, it's, it's one of those things where I think with my journey, my particular journey, I, I am a person who I really enjoy the beginning you know, yeah. I, it's I mean, like the, the, most the beginning exciting. is like the best part. And so I just lean into it. Yeah. You know, and then when things are if not when, because I'm not speaking that they're always going to go bad. But there are times where it changes. And I really I really try my best to just believe. And I try to keep this hope alive that love will win, that love is still going to be present. 
the logic part, I do agree with you. Um, and in the previous situation, you did counsel me through something where it's like, is there, are there actions matching it? Mm -hmm. And they were at the time, the actions were there. And then, then, it didn't happen. I mean, it, it shifted into something else. So I, you I still <laughs> are running that narrative because I still feel like it was suspect oh. from day one. OK, but I'm going to let you know what I'm going to let you. I, it, 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 I mean, you which situation you're talking about. So, <laughs> I, you know, we're, there's a lot the of I'm, last. It's all a general we're talking about the last. That's what you were you referring to. The last before the last. You said. <laughs> Oh yeah, the last one for the last. So you do know which one I'm talking about then. Could you just correct me? I know, but the, but it's you know, I have a myriad of experiences, so it's not like I, I'm drawing from all of the experiences. This is true. Spicy. This is true. I'm, I'm drawing from everything because I think all of them inform me now. And I do think that my logic sensibility now is different. Cause now oh my god, you are more sensible. It's a whole I will give you that. different game. But I had to go through those things. I had to be a little love struck, a little love bombed and falling into these, mm -hmm. you know, things or even going through and, and, and they haven't all been the same so like now at this point I think my like I said my logic sensibilities are a little bit higher mm -hmm. so I'm speaking you know from before but now I think I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty well balanced now what did it make you feel when uh I said like serial dater or loveaholic um, you know loveaholic has a negative connotation to me I'm not gonna lie like I'm just <laughs> drunk in love and I'm just like Everybody, you can love, you can oh, love. Oh, you didn't you know this love. was an intervention? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like, you know, I can look at that from a, from a negative place, but because I embrace being a lover, I, I okay, I'm a loveaholic. And I will stand by that, that love is special, love is beautiful, love is the driving force. The The most important organ is our heart. And I feel like the the heart and love, it, stem, it, it gives you a different feeling in life and you know it's something to be inspired by it's something something to be motivated by and it it just it's it it's love is where it's at so being a loveaholic that you deem me a loveaholic yes. I, i'll take it um like i said it, i don't mean it in a negative way so um i want to because i want to clarify okay uh so yes, it sounds. <laughs> it sounds like you just be giving love away. You just out here. But I do feel like you do. Okay, so I'll use an example from like, uh, we can be at a uh, let's just say that's like a, 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 a so oh um the ESPY awards. Mm -hmm. We can be at the ESPYS and you know um a, a starter for whatever team can walk up to you and you will be like you know yes you have my time and full attention for the next ten minutes. Go ahead and pitch me, <laughs> or. We can be at Runyon Canyon and the homeless person jumps out of the woods and you will still be like, yes, you have my time and attention for 10 minutes. And I'm like, are we really entertaining that the homeless person? That speaks to my person? humanity, okay? Yes, but I, you will hear him out. I will. And, <laughs> you guys, I'm not playing on this. I will. And this is not to say that he is less than, but this is to say that there is absolutely no way chance or a hope in heck that you will allow this person to like love on you or pull you right um but you will still give each person this individualized time and attention that makes each person feel seen heard and understood Absolutely. yes and also instilling hope within them mm -hmm. and i think that is very powerful i think that while you have this deep huge desire to feel love you also operate in a place of being love. Absolutely. And that is what I also very much love about you. Oh, don't cry. Cry, cry. I cry. don't want to cry. <laughs> cry, cry. This cry. is girls talking. <laughs> cry, cry, cry. <laughs> You've been trying to make me cry forever. <laughs> but that was really beautiful. I received that. I, I think that's one of my gifts. And, you know, so loveaholic. You know, whatever. Lovers Anonymous. Love, is whatever you want to say. <laughs> Hi, I'm Azure D and I'm a loveaholic. Um, um, but no, I I received that and that is, you you nailed it. I don't even have to explain because my drop, that is who I am. That's the essence of who I am. That's how I live. That's how I operate. But I will, like I said, if we bring it back to relationships, I have been trying to use more discernment yeah. in that process of, you know, allowing that said person in with more logic and making sure that their actions match, you know, their words. Yeah. Um, what people are going to ask, though, is like, OK, you have Spicy Mari as one of your besties. <laughs> you are a loveaholic. Why are you still single? Why um, have you not found that person? And I feel like for me, um, 
like that's just an easy answer that I can just like throw out there. I don't even need you to respond to that because you are such a level hot. Like you, um, like most of us women have extended your energy and time and space to, um, men deserving and undeserving, but that weren't necessarily ready at the mm -hmm. same time as you were for right. like marriage and moving the relationship to the next needle. Mm -hmm. I think you're at a place in your life right now where you are ready to be a wife. I think like you have graduated through the school of love knocks. <laughs> Hard knocks. <Yeah. laughs> love knocks. Right. And you are now like, okay, I think this is the time when I'm ready to be selfless. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and you've always been a server, but I think that you were not always mindful in relationships. Mm -hmm. You weren't always um, about uh, as intentional as you are now mm -hmm. in how you show up for someone, but also demanding the reciprocity, but then mm -hmm. also creating space. Uh, doing to, my pizza. To, yes, doing your pizza. pizza You're so open to the exercises I'm, now. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I love when people DM me and they're like, yes. spicy, I did the pizza. The pizza is, like, is, yes. is classic. That's it. That's such it's a, a it's great a game changer. Yeah, game changer for sure. And I love that you did that with me. And I feel like now you really are like, Okay, easy the pizza. Because mm -hmm. you operate 80% emotion, 20% logic, yeah. the pizza now gives you an opportunity to say, is he a good person? Does he have the character things that I need in mm -hmm. order to respect and admire him and believe he is a good human? Does he, you know, that's the crust. Does mm -hmm. he have the sauce? Is mm -hmm. he, does he treat me the way that I deserve? And does he do these things on a consistent basis? Do I like the way he makes me feel on a consistent basis? And then the toppings, of course, like, you know, you love hotties. <laughs> um, so it's not hard for you to get the toppings. It's the sauce and the crust that I that always matters, that matters. care about with you. But I think um, seeing you navigate now with a, a little roadmap, I think has been very helpful. It's helped me to, to find what I want. Yeah. That's golden. Yes. And I think sometimes we're out here dating and doing this and that, and we don't really know. So you may be get wooed over the, yep. the toppings. You're like, oh, he's tall. He's this, he's that. But the crust and the sauce is really the meat of it. Yeah. And like we overlook that. I mean, you know this, you teach this in your class and, you know, with but your But I clients. love hearing you educated on but, it. Keep but going. it's crazy because <laughs> I just, I'm so familiar with your, with your, with my method, with the your methods, methods my and, 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 but it really works. And, and I think before we did the pizza, I don't know what I was doing. Yeah. I felt really lost. And after the pizza, I was like, oh, it's clear. I get it now. Yeah. Oh, this is, this is what I want. Yeah. You know, this is what it should feel like. This is what it should look like. And it's totally changed my lens and perspective on you know, seeing and, and, and viewing or being able to recognize yeah. that person. And I think what's good too is that um, it helps you in the belief of he exists because mm -hmm. a lot of the things mirror already things that you do mm -hmm. within the pizza, right? The good person yeah. and the sauce. You're like, dang, this is kind of like low key me already. Right. Like I exist, therefore I know he exists. He exists. Yeah. And I think that your hope is what really has driven um, you having so many relationships, good and bad. But not I think, so many. Dang. Uh, look, I started off with saying like we've been in a lot of relationships mm -hmm. like that. It, it contributes to our wealth of knowledge and our mm -hmm. experience. Absolutely. And I do know and believe that your husband is coming soon. Um, and I will I'm sure we're going to be a part of that journey just like everyone, you know, but. Uh, I appreciate and what I admire in you that I constantly am trying to teach to my clients is that you have to be the love that you want to attract. And mm -hmm. what that looks like is being in love with the thing that you actually want as well, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not enough to just mirror the kind of person that you want. Mm -hmm. You also have to be in love with the species. So men. <laughs> men, right? A lot of women will say, I want a man, I want a man, I want a man. And then when I assess, I'm like, but do you really like men? Do you really love men? They cannot tell me anything that they love about men. They've lost oh. hope. So I'm going to ask you, just like I ask all my clients, what do you love about men? Give me 20 things. Okay, 20. 20. Let's see if we can do it. 20? 20? 20 things that you love about the I male mean, species. I do love men. The male, male species. species. Um, I love their masculinity. I love the way they smell. I love the, the their ability to be great fathers. I love their the providing abilities. Um, I love the way they speak into women or I was I guess I could say me. I love the way men speak into me speak into me. Like if I'm not feeling attractive, a man has a way of making you feel beautiful. Yeah. Um, I love that they can be foundations in the family, that they are leaders. I love the style of a man. I love the strength of a man, um, the passion of a man. <laughs> I love um, the hard work ethic of a man. Mm. Um, 
Uh, where am I? At? That's how, ten. Dang. Okay, ten more. Oh, this is hard. Okay. Um, did I say all that the way they smell? Cause scent yeah, is so important. Yeah, you said important. scent. I did. You love scent. Yes. I love the scent. If you smell good, <laughs> listen. Me in. It doesn't be it. Um, <laughs> I stole a cologne from your man one time and bought it for my husband. Listen. <laughs> the scent. I know the scents. Okay. Cause I'm like myself. So I know the scents. Um, uh, I love their, um, um um oh my goodness i feel like i'm on the spot you i said 10 it. good ones you can do it so 10 more yep um, they are creative they invent mm. things um they've invented a lot of cool things they operate from they lead with logic mm. so that's as women one. that's a good balance and they they're more predictable than we are and they yeah. can kind of keep that balance for us yeah um i love the where are we at i need to know. 14 14 okay i love their bodies mm, you can say that um i love um their I love the way a man um, commands a room, mm. the confidence. Yep. Um, I love uh, a man who can be in touch with his vulnerability. I think that's a powerful trait of a man who can be in his in his vulnerability. I love the their voice. Mm. Um, I, I I just love their voice. Um, I love. Oh gosh, the fact that they can co-create and they can be half, a uh, half, uh, they can create a child with you. Yeah, they can be the giver of life. Well, we make, we we are the giver of life, but they help to create that. They um, plant the seed. Right, they plant Literally the seed. Plant the seed. Literally, <laughs> give us the seed. Um, I love. Where are we at? Yeah, one more. One more. Okay, this has to be a good one. I love the way they love. Be more specific. When a man is in love with you, mm -hmm. how he shows up for you, how he speaks to you, how he treats you, that feeling is, there's nothing better for me. Yeah. And because I've experienced the best love, you know, like I said, sent me from my father to certain relationships, the love that they have shown and how that has affected me has been monumental in my life. So I would say the way a man loves when he's really like, I mean, you can see, I mean, we see on Instagram dis huge displays of love, mm -hmm. but in real life, I've actually witnessed, like when I see my friends loved by their person, by yeah. their by their partner, and the way a man shows up when he loves someone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chef's bon kiss. Appetit. Yes. Okay, so let me tell you what I, I love. Those were good ones. <laughs> um, so yes, you, know, you hit the number right, 20. Okay. Women who are listening are going to be like, well, dang. I couldn't even come up with five on my own. I'm that was just, hard to do in 20 seconds. You, but you did a really good job, right? Um, and certain women may even like take your list because they're like, I can't come up with my own list, right? Mm -hmm. But some women are going to hear it and then not even be able to come up with like a few. Other women may hear it and be like, dang, I couldn't complete it because I don't know if I really feel the way that mm -hmm. Azure D feels. And for me... Um, listening and knowing that, right? Because I sit mm -hmm. on the receiving end from clients who don't love men, who are mm. like, fudge, help me fall in love with this thing. I know I want it. I know I need it, but because I don't. Because they've been hurt? Or? Because they've been hurt because they didn't have an example growing up of the things that you just said, right? Mm. So it's hard to buy into that these men exist mm -hmm. if there's no evidence right. of that. But I use the example of um, finances. We'll do it mm. for finances, Right. We will, uh, you and I grew up with very humble beginnings, yeah. right? Like we didn't have much as kids. We call ourselves poor. Oh, my mom said, don't use poor. My mom said, use broke. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, were, we were broke. We definitely were My mom was like, why can't you say broke? Don't use poor. I was like, okay, whatever. Same mom. thing. Oh. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, she, so, so I say that to say that although that was how we grew up and we did not see money growing up we didn't see wealth we didn't see success our parents weren't like college educated mm -hmm. there was still this drive in us to know that it was still possible yes. for ourselves and we put in the work to be able to be at a place where we could uh take care of ourselves and be able to take care of our loved ones mm -hmm. right it's the same thing with relationship although we may not grow up in a household where our parents were madly in love with each other 
uh, the belief system for a lot of people to enter into a relationship was a lot harder when they're like, well, I didn't have an example. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like I could touch it. I didn't feel like I could taste it. Media set the example for me of what a relationship should even look like. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard for people to buy into that these men exist if they've never held one, touched right. one, taste one, felt one, yeah. uh, been courted by one, um, and saw one in the household, let alone even with other friends or family members. Mm -hmm. So we're asking them to almost believe in a unicorn right i mean well it's the same concept with anything you anything. start a business right anything like i have exactly. multiple friends who are entrepreneurs you're included boop, boop. and i remember when this was just an idea and now and it was your belief your self belief not only in your business and your idea but just you had your own motivation like you were like i'm determined to make create my own life i want to own my own business i want to do that yep. you didn't have this spicy life didn't have a you know you didn't have an example before you right had there really was no blueprint create it from <laughs> going from right so i think it's the same thing like you have to just you have to trust that it exists and you can have it mm -hmm. and a lot of this is faith yep faith. a lot of this is you know, but we apply that to our spiritual beliefs. For sure. We've never seen God, but we know he exists, exists. where those that believe. Yep. You know, it's it's applying these same things into the love space. Yeah. And I think that, you know, as long as you believe it and if you apply the same things, you can start to manifest it in reality. Yeah. And I've literally watched it happen. I And I mean social media also allows us to see somebody have an idea and nothing existed before that and yeah. they created it so we have all the examples you need you may not have had the father i had mm -hmm. you may not have had the treatment i mean i've gotten from men who've loved me but you still have real life examples that we can yeah. just go on our phone and see or in our family or a friend of a friend it does exist and i and i feel like if we if we have a negative view of it mm -hmm. if we're like oh Oh, whatever. I'm not, I'm going to be lonely. If you have this negative view, then of course you're going to generate that in your reality. Yeah. But if you believe, then you'll keep attracting it. And I just feel like, although I'm not married, I am still living proof that it, I can't, you can get it, you yeah. know? So I don't know. I, I think it's all about mindset. It's all about perspective. And with anything, you just have to believe. This sounds kind of corny, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's, I feel like I'm being, no, but it's, it, it's true. You just gotta believe. You gotta believe, right? You know? But I think that that is um, the the piece, though, right? So, like, in in this question around um, what do you love about men, the reason why it's important that you guys think about that is because uh, if you want this thing, right, if you want companionship and you want partnership and you want a man, but you don't love men that is working against law of attraction, mm -hmm. law of vibration, yeah. right? You are not going to be able to manifest that because you aren't madly in love with the thing that you were trying to manifest. The second element in why you need the self-love component. So old girls like message earlier, you need the self-love because if you are not in love with self, mm -hmm. law of attraction still won't work mm -hmm. because you need someone to come along to fall in love with you. Right. So, you are making a disconnect between the love for them and the love for you that they should have if you don't love self. So that's mm -hmm. why it starts with the self guys. But Absolutely. you need to understand that it is very important that if you need help, if you haven't had an example, then you may be someone who needs a coach so that you can fall back in love with the thing that it is that you say that you want, right? Is why like I even exist is because mm -hmm. let me let me help you change your beliefs by doing some reprogramming mm -hmm. that will help you get there. So mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm saying this to you guys just so that um, you can think about like, dang, am I that person that like can't mm -hmm. come up with a list of 20 and that isn't really that crazy about the thing that I think that I want? Because there is help and resources out there. Mm -hmm. um, but I love that I believed every single 20 of the things that you said. I was like, yes, I believe all those. That was not easy though. I know, I'm not going to lie. Hard. To come up with that on the spot, it's like, but my reverence for men, you know, it, not men in general, but just man, the species. Yeah. It, it you kind of just I just leaned into the idea that wow, you know, watching a man build something or you know, you know, seeing a man be vulnerable or like those are the things, you know? Like those are the aspects that we have oh, to appreciate. That's what other thing you said. So, um I love that you said seeing a man um be emotional and vulnerable mm -hmm. right to me that is so beautiful and that is the secret sauce mm. to uh getting commitment and getting 
a man to walk down the aisle. Mm. If you can get a man emotionally attached, you have the man. The problem with a lot of us women, because we operate in so much masculine energy, Mm -hmm. we lose the feminine energy Mm -hmm. and overcompensate for a lack of love. We desensitize desensitize ourselves from the feeling component Mm -hmm. and from the vulnerability component therefore not allowing us to use our vulnerability superpower that makes them feel soft and safe that Mm -hmm. gets them emotional Mm -hmm. to then fall in love with us right so there's the same power that i said that you would have like if we went to the espies versus like the homeless person that you Mm -hmm. gave that energy to you have the ability to make both of those type of people emotional because you operate in a let me love you right now and let me embrace your love energy Mm -hmm. okay yeah i would say that that was a work in progress for me to develop that or or, or i've always been empathetic Mm -hmm. and you know cared about humanity and people Mm -hmm. as just feeling seen but as far as like knowing how to use that i think that there have been some relationships relationships where i've shown up in my masculine Mm -hmm. and i had to learn that when you're in your feminine when you're you know, you're creating a space for them to be softer, yeah. gentler. That was learned. That was something that as a result of certain relationships, I let I got I led to that. Yeah. But it wasn't always like that. And I think that the practice of it right now, I'm leaning into the practice of it. Yeah. I'm like fully feminine. I'm in my soft girl era. Hey. I'm like receiving the love. I'm sitting in it. I'm allowing you know, I, and I feel the best in my when I'm in my feminine. Yeah, though. I thrive in that. I like, like to be kept. I like to be. Taken. I like that feeling, <laughs> and and that doesn't mean that it's independent of me. You know, it's I'm I can be both, but I love being in my feminine. I love it, and I love the reaction I get when I'm in my feminine fully. You know, I can show up as my best when I'm in the, in my feminine. But a lot of people say, well, like, well, if a man's not sitting in his masculine, like, then they can't sit in their feminine. Like and, the polarity. And, well, yes. And what I have to say to that is um, the way that you show up in your femininity, I feel like while you may disagree with this, I feel like it's actually not indicative of them. What I see from you is what a lot of women should do. And what I coach a lot of women on is uh, showing up in femininity, showing up in femininity, showing up in femininity, showing up in femininity, learning when to pivot back and forth. Right. Masculine and energy is needed. But operating it as your way of being so that Mm. when a man comes along and he's like hey i want to audition for the part if he's not sitting in his masculinity the way that you need and he shows up with too much femininity you will now be able to tell if you're not compatible Mm. based on you being your authentic feminine energy Mm. but if you show up in masculinity and he's not showing up with the energy that you need now you're in character Mm -hmm. and you're not able to tell like are me and this man really compatible? Right. So I think that you've done a great job in leaning in with your femininity. And I've seen it shift back and forth, right. you know, yeah. from time to time, mm-hmm. but always reconnecting back to your source. Cause it's my default. I think it's all about like, what's your default? I think my default is, is I'm in my feminine, but there's times where I have to be other things based on, you know, whether it's in, in work or whatever, but in my relationship, like, I my I want to be in my default, which yeah. is in my feminine. Yeah, you know? and I think that serves you better because now we can tell who we're really compatible right. with. And I yes. say we. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because right. I take on your relationships. Right. I'm like, oh, we gonna find you us a husband. Me. You and me. Yes, we about to find us a husband, <laughs> right? Like, because uh, I really just I feel like <laughs> I feel like I am not just a part of the process, but. Um, you want to see your friends thriving. You want to mm-hmm. see your friends in love. And I feel like you're finally in a place where you will listen to me. And so you, the, co- the coaching, right, plus mm-hmm. the ability for us to go out there and connect, I mm-hmm. think, like, you have working th- everything working in your favor and you're not at a place. We're not at a place where you would be like, okay, you know what, Marty, what should I do about? Or, like, mm-hmm. how can I handle this? Or mm-hmm. even... I just feel like that's such a great place for you to be in because I'm like, yes, this is what I've always wanted. Yeah. Let me help you. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I think you have been a great force. I mean, I've obviously done a lot of self work as a well. Lot. Like I I'm about this life. So yeah. you know, I've been doing self work for years. I but really I think that's why you were myself. able to to even um us be in a place of compatibility now in this process because you did the self work right before you may have been close to me and been like and and let me help you guys understand a lot of times i get clients because they don't 
trust their friends or they don't want the bias of their friends. Mm -hmm. And that is very hard to uh, be unbiased to your friends when you've seen so much about their love life, right? Mm -hmm. So it's why I, even in business, because your friends aren't always going to give you the best advice and it's not always going to be unbiased. Mm -hmm. With our relationship, I do have to um, pivot hats of, okay, am I going to show up Mari the friend right now? Or mm -hmm. am I going to show up like the expert? Right, right. And I think that I'm fortunate that you finally came to a place where you were like, okay, you can show, I'll let you show up for me as both. Where before yeah. I could only show up for you as a friend. And now you're like, I respect you. Give me what you got. And that yeah. to me is such an honor. No, it is. I mean, I always respected you, though. It was never. But it's like you we've known listen, each other for so many years. You wouldn't listen to my counsel. And now you listen to my counsel. And well, I'm like, woohoo. No, I wouldn't listen. <laughs> I mean, we've been friends for so long before the Spicy Life even existed. So we have just <laughs> always have been able to speak into, into each other's lives. Now, I feel like you've dedicated your life to this yes. craft of Find, helping people find love. So you have a lot more experience. You deal with a lot of people. And so I think there's a lot to be gained from what you what you're experiencing in doing this work. I think you were way in. I think I think I had to put a, a certain amount of years in you guys to eradicate my thought and bopping days with her. <laughs> I mean, listen, I really know her, y'all. I really, really know her. For her to so, say, okay, now I believe you know I'm what like, you're talking about because okay. I've, I've seen you in the streets. Okay, yeah. uh, I, but the, I'm, 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 I say this like playfully, but you really have um, even seen like me grow up and, yeah, and vice versa. And definitely. I think that's the beautiful thing about our friendship. Mm -hmm. And I think um, all of our friend group like loves the way that you love. I think um, oh. it's such a beautiful thing. And I want more people to have that. That's why I wanted the episode to be about I'm in love with love. I think uh, I also though too have to speak about the toxicity of um sometimes when we are immature and we haven't done the work mm -hmm. and you're a loveaholic, it can look like you going from only toxic, to yeah. toxic experience to toxic mm -hmm. experience, to toxic experience, never uh, evaluating how you are contributing to the toxicity. Um, I don't think that that has uh, even, that's not even the case that I need to address with you. I needed to just address it on the show because there are those people who are serial daters but aren't going about it in the right way because they haven't done the work to make healthy decisions, right? I can also They're not speak to that, taking a, yeah. uh, taking a break. Okay, speak to it, guys. Because, I was trying to go there with because you. Because it's not all this flowers and roses. Okay. It's like, I'm gonna I let, think, I'm gonna let to it be go. honest, like, I, I was in relationships. There were some parts of it that were toxic, and then I didn't do the proper healing. And I got into another situation and some of that stuff spilled over yes. into the next relationship. And I think ultimately it was the demise of that said relationship. So it's, it hasn't been all peaches and sunflowers. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to learn that as well. Like you can really make a mistake by not doing the work. Mm -hmm. We can't run from the work. We can't run from evaluating ourselves. Really, you know, taking a, having a deep dive examination of how I showed up, what I did wrong, you know, taking accountability for like what co-created the situation because mm -hmm. it's not just one person in the yep. relationship. Yep. There are two people that exist in this. And so we are co-creating, co, two people are co-creating this experience. Mm -hmm. And I had to really look at myself and say, okay. And I think I've even bounced ideas with some of you guys. Mm -hmm. Like, what did I do? Like, listen to this. Did I, what do you feel I did in this situation or how could I have done this better? I remember having these specific conversations with you mm -hmm. because I know you're going to tell me the real, like we have to be honest with that. Yeah. It's about looking in the mirror, being honest with yourself. And so you don't show up the same way in the next situation mm -hmm. that took me doing that, like in those in between times. And I didn't do it in one relationship. I, I like I said, I brought that extra baggage, but you know, you got to keep learning, but you got to face it. You got to really deal with yourself before you get into your next situation because you'll create that again. I wonder if I would love for, let me say, I would love for more friends to have those type of conversations, right? right? Um, what I uh, have fun with and what um, I've talked about before on other things, but one of the exercises that I do with my clients is make them do a SWOT analysis. Oh, they yeah. have to go to their friends and family members um, and ask them what are their strengths, strengths weaknesses, weaknesses opportunities. opportunities, and threats. Yeah. And um, bring that business school. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Because that's what it is. We'll do it for money. We'll do it for like our career. We'll right. do a SWOT analysis, but we're not doing enough SWATs on ourselves. That's a great idea. 
So thank you. It's in my growth guide. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you guys can have the growth guide uh, right. on the spicy life dot com. Little plug. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's one of the exercises that I think really helps you in understanding like how you show up in the world. And, and is it mm-hmm. is it actually who you believe yourself to be or is it just your perspective? Right. So hearing from other people really gives you an opportunity and chance because while it's it may be in relation to their relationship with you Mm -hmm. it still gives you perspective of like oh i didn't see that blind spot Mm -hmm. i didn't see you know that i did this and i think we've even had that in our friendship before where we had to have a hard conversation with each other and how Mm -hmm. we showed up for one another what we did that was immature uh what we did that was hurtful what Mm -hmm. we did that you know because uh Didi and I have gone through um we had a breakup a breakup it was a, a real breakup a real friendship like breakup. a real <laughs> for like a year breakup. oh my god it was a heartbreak it was, it was a real <laughs> it was a real breakup Dang, it's making me think that I need to do another episode you should that needs to be a whole friends. other episode yeah but that's I'm gonna table that because I want to do a I whole be on that episode <laughs> yeah actually that would be I, I think I need to bring you back for another episode on friendship heartbreak like, I would love that I think I we need to do we, I think we should do a whole episode on how we uh broke up and how we worked it out so I'm gonna save that because we really had a mature as like that was I think that was probably one of the first adult mature friendship um, talks yeah. that I've had. That was my first. Obviously, you know, I haven't had multiple ones of those, but I did have one actually last night with another <laughs> friend. But like, but that was, that started, like that really let me know like, that oh, we could do this. we're grown yeah. now. So we need to have these hard conversations because friendships are relationships. Oh my God. Like, yes. We have breakups. We go through our learning each other, communication styles yep. and seeing who, you know, what's your love language? Right. How do I show up? For How you? do you, what do you need from me? Yeah. But those grown up conversations are the reason why we're who we are now, yep. you know? So I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm a believer in just sticking together and, you know, and having those conversations. So I, I'm a proponent of that. But yeah, like that we'll would be do, a great episode. So we'll do, um, I'm going to have, uh, when I do my whole like next set of podcasts, I'm, I'm going to have you come back for that one. I like I want, I want us one. to do a whole friendship one. Cause I think there's so much, so many lessons and gems people oh can get God. from that. So sorry to tease you guys with that right now. <laughs> Teaser coming soon. <laughs> Teaser. Um, but, uh, when it comes to understanding yourself and being able to lean on friends, I do think that you need to be able to respect their counsel. I mm-hmm. do think that you need to see them um, also uh, walking the walk and talking the talk. Absolutely. So I think um, you also trusting my advice because you see like my relationship unfolds and me actually practice my spicy tips yeah. with my husband mm-hmm. or even tell you when like I didn't kill that spicy tip today mm-hmm. with him. Like we didn't, we didn't knock this one out the park. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, being honest and vulnerable about some of the flaws of relationship or some of the, the strengths that we operate in um, allows you a safe place to be able to say like, OK, I can trust my friend in how she's counseling me or how mm-hmm. she's showing up for me because mm-hmm. I don't want it to just be 100 percent indicative of my work. I also want it to be in the life that I'm living to. I think is very important. I have a, I have like a hands on. I, I see you like I really have insight to what you're about this is really who you like you're living this you're breathing it this and is the spicy it's life. your purpose and you're thriving in it so like absolutely but i i think you're also a mirror i think you give great feedback i think friends also give you the feedback yeah this is all feedback you got to be receptive receptive to it yep. sometimes it's constructive criticism sometimes it's going to be praise but you got to be able to like ex- experience it all and i do trust and it's not you with always that. gonna feel good yeah so i think in hearing when you were going through some of your breakups and um or just decisions that you were making maybe in the relationship i think that if you love someone, they should have permission to tell you the truth, the truth and what they see going on. And I think that uh, certain parts of certain times you were closed, but eventually you came around to new now, you know, like DD 2.0. That Azure is, D. <laughs> this whole interview. <laughs> Azure D. <laughs> Mahiti Didi. Oh, God. That is, okay, Marisella. That is like, <laughs> dang. No, You're right. Dang. That is like, um, yes, I will um, lean into this information, even if I don't like how it's making me feel, right? So, like, that's when the logic kicks in is, is this making sense? Mm-hmm. Is this um, in support of the goal? The information that the friend is giving me, is it in support of my goal mm-hmm. or does it work against my goal? Does it help me become a better person? Or work against that, right? Because we spoke to logic and emotion Mm -hmm. earlier. Because sometimes becoming better doesn't always feel good. 
man, it does not. And like I said, because you are coming from a place of love, like I would never question your intentions by giving me mm -hmm. feedback. So it's like I don't I don't have a guard up with the, with my tribe, with the people that I that I trust with imparting their advice into my life and speaking into my life. I don't listen to a lot of people, but the people I do trust, I really trust y'all to help me get through this life shit. <laughs> I really do. I lean on you guys for that Facts. support. Yeah. So like it's not a lot of people, but the ones that are the ones Y'all know. Yes. So if I'm going to you experiencing something, I'm going to really fully listen because I know you're coming from a place of love. Yeah. And I trust that you have my best interest at heart. And that's that's why I'm able to receive it like that. For sure. Um, we're now going to shift because I want to talk about Imani. Oh, oh yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes, you did a film. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> you had a red carpet for your I film on BET Plus the other night. Um, that did. to me, I'm so proud of you. Like Thank to see you, you still grinding acting like i i remember when you were doing like these you know small little projects plays you were doing and... yeah plays oh my god when you were yes. doing these plays yes um plays. but to be now like in these like you know box office films i feel like is incredible <laughs> uh, i'm yeah. so proud of you like it's it's not just streaming but it's also in the theater yeah and select amc theater yes, yes. like that's huge yeah. right so like when you were talking about oh i saw when you know i, I was there before the business so, like I, girl i was there been on this, yeah. like when you were you would just tr try to come to your little auditions right. and like you know i remember you trying to pick out your outfits for the audition like yeah. <laughs> i'm from there from the beginning so um just seeing you now in a movie where you're playing like you know, a character <laughs> and like, I'm just like, oh my God, I'm, I, I love one having, you know, front row being witness to mm -hmm. my friend excelling, but I want you to talk about the film, talk about uh, Dominique's role and like what we can expect to see you and who is, you know, Dominique in the film. Like, why should we, why should we book BT plus right now and watch it? <laughs> well, it's streaming on BT plus right now. Um, Imani to me is a really great display of a strong black female lead and i have to shout out Brittany hall because she kills the role she's the lead of the film and i would say it's like a female born identity mm, action packed yeah something you haven't really seen you know um a lot of familiar faces some some not so familiar so it's a lot of fresh new talent yeah. and um everybody's kicking ass and but britney is literally kicking ass <laughs> she's like literally she kills kapow. it she's yeah she's, i mean i mean she definitely embraces the role my character is well she's the protagonist um i'm kind of i would be considered the villain um, and I, without saying too much about it, like my role, I, I kind of help to facilitate an entire, it's hard to not say, I know don't because tell us, you don't gotta tell us. watch it. I don't want to <laughs> give it away, but, um, it's action packed. It's, um, story performance driven. Um, uh, Mike Cole does a great job as our director. He really created a, a great cast of, you know, we all collaborated and everybody brought their A game. I think it was just such a great experience to be a part of an action thriller. It's all, always been a dream of yes, mine to be a part of an action thriller. I mean, I'm hoping that the next one I'll be really able to do some fighting um, <laughs> because I am really athletic, but, um, but just to be a part of it is just, you know, a part of my dream. Yeah. So I have to, I'm so grateful that I was able to be casted in the role. And I think it's, you know, it's a lot of, I would say it's like a women empowerment, you know, mm -hmm. kick ass, like all women will be inspired watching this. And it's a lot of surprises, a lot of twists and turns and things you don't expect. Yeah. And just a solid, great movie. I mean, we saw it in the theaters when for the premiere, and that was my first time seeing it. Yeah. And, you know, there's a, a sexy scene in there. <laughs> and so it was like, you know, my dad was in the audience, and I'm like, okay, dad, <laughs> like, you might see some stuff. But overall. He's like, I was wiping your ass, child. He said, he gonna tell me, you gotta ask like your mom. I was oh, like, my God. <laughs> cringe. Just, like, cringe. I'm cringing right now. Daddy, oh, TMI. Oh, no. I do that to Prince. So, and I'm like, baby, that's your booty. He's like, but I think my, that's your booty. <laughs> right. But my dad has seen every performance, yeah. every play, yeah. every, I mean, my co from college to now, every premiere, every TV show, every commercial. So he's just, he looks at it like you're just in, you know, you're living your passion, your yep. dream. So it's, it's it was lots of fun, lots of work, labor of love. And I'm excited that we got distribution. Um, and we are, like I said, streaming now on BET Plus and in select AMC theaters. You just have to check your listings, but 
I'm yeah. gonna circle back to I'm gonna go I'm gonna go in our youth, right? Uh, okay. <laughs> I think this was early. our youth. I'm still young. What you talking about? <laughs> okay, early twenties. Okay. 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 <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm 27. We're so. still young. Um. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Edit that out. No. Uh. Early twenties. I remember. Um. I set out to. Uh. I think it, it was early on. I'm going to host and I'm like, I'm going to be, you know, this uh, amazing relationship host. (laughs) And you're like, I'm going to be this actress. Right. And I remember you and I going out on audition after audition after audition for different projects and nothing hitting. And you and I having this conversation about us being madly in love with this thing that keeps rejecting us. Rejection. And I remember feeling like, dang, my career with relationship is very similar to career with like men at the time where it was mm-hmm. like, but I'm so bomb. How can you not see my yeah. worth? Right. I remember us feeling that about our careers and we experienced mm-hmm. that at the same time. Right. But you being such a motivating force, it's like, keep on going. You yeah. could do it. And me having to do the same for you. Yeah. And to see us now fast forward to me, like literally watching you on my TV at times, you know, with these major stars, because you've done a, like a lot of projects, like I've seen yeah. you in a lot of stuff, but to see now you still, you know, 10 years later, like you, you have not stopped. You keep going. And it just Can't feels stop, so good. Stop. I'm like, dang, I remember <laughs> when we couldn't even pay rent. I sometimes, <laughs> I sometimes feel crazy <laughs> for doing this because I don't know anybody in their right mind that would continue to, like you said, be rejected time after time, year after year. And after year, after After year, year. and still (laughs) be here, you know, standing and and pursuing it. And I think, like I said, it just all circles back to just my belief system. Yeah. I, when I believe, I believe. Yeah. When I believe in love, I fucking believe. Yep. When I believe in a vision that I have for myself, I fucking believe. Yeah. From my outfits to my career to my, you know, I take this shit serious and I really have a belief that, and I, and I don't feel like I'm where I want to be, but I feel like I'm, I'm still standing. I'm still here. You're still I, going. You, you know, I'm still going and I'm still at it where a lot of people would have given up by now. Oh yeah. I mean, and a lot of people have lot of people by have. this point, but like I said, my belief system is top tier and I just, I, I just have allowed that to carry me through in this, this very hard pursuit. Yeah. And I, I think that there's, um, like I said, a mirror to career and um, relationship. Yeah, because yeah. it's really about uh, I love myself so much. I know that while you may not see my love in light, yeah. whether that's career or whether that's man, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that I'm going to allow you to uh, take my light away from me forever. Absolutely. Right. I may get a little dark, but then I'm going to find myself again and come back and I'm going to continue on this journey till I'm in an alignment with someone who does see my value. Till mm-hmm. I'm in alignment with someone who does see my light. And it may take a long time. It may take a while. And you but, may take some hits along the way. And I will right? take some hits along like, the way. Uh, I remember um, bringing you to the radio station and I'm, I'm like, oh my God, I made, I'm here at the radio station to have my right. own radio show. And then I take a hit and at some point I lose yeah. that job, just like a breakup. Like you, you lose those things. Fun. But I'm going to get back up. I'm going to start my own podcast. I'm going to keep going on and on. And like, now look at you. We don't, Your show is next. This is true. I'm going to have a TV that. show. That's next. It's I'm already gonna a, I'm going to have a relationship talk show. Yes, but you are. I, I'm huge on no matter what hits you, whether it's love or career, um, whenever you experience loss or rejection or just a, uh, right, like a lack of acceptance, you don't stop and you don't give up. You have yeah. to still tell yourself, you still have to remember that you are lovable and you are worthy. Absolutely. And um, I think that while we're joking about you being in love with love and relationship with others, I also think that you understand the importance of being in love with self. Mm-hmm. And while it may not feel that you're always in love with self, I think you being vulnerable and saying like, I don't always love myself is a very big deal too. That was a hard question, Marty. Like, <laughs> Cause I struggle and you know, because Maybe it's the business. Maybe it's a lot of factors, you know, how I form my identity, like my beauty standards or whatever. Maybe comparisons. I don't know. But like there's a lot of times where you just struggle with like looking at yourself and just yeah. feeling love, you know, and if there can be some d- disappointments along the way. And that's a it's an ongoing process. And I, I know a lot of people say that, but it really is mm-hmm. like I'm constantly trying to find a way to love myself through all of this shit. Yep. And 
it has not been easy, but I think I'm remaining hopeful and optimistic yep. and still staying true to like, I know what I deserve. I know it's coming for me. I know love, all these things. I know it's going to happen. So I'm just going to keep going. And my light is better. Like, I, I feel like I want y'all to get the light yep. over the darkness. Yep. I mean, there is darkness, but the light is what I want to give to y'all, to everybody. Like, you know, so that's just where I choose to, to, to live in. Oh my gosh. I love that. And 2023 <laughs> Fahidi Azure Didi Azure <laughs> is gonna spread love and light yes. let where let everybody know if they want to find your love and light and love on you where they can find you you can stroke my <laughs> you stroke my Instagram I love that play with my Twitter and stroke my Instagram is yes. genius but you can find me at on Instagram and Twitter at at Azure Didi that's A-Z-U-R-D-E-D-E -D -E. Didi is the nickname Azure D is the name so just so you know, it's Azure D, but my, but my Instagram is Azure D D. Hey, so you guys you can, can <laughs> always play with my Twitter or stroke my Instagram at spicy Mari. Go to the spicy life.com. Click and subscribe uh, to the spicy life podcast. Share this episode with a friend, uh, help others help themselves by spreading this love. Okay. Yes. And you guys can always sign up for a course or schedule a free consultation with me at the spicy life.com. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy 